show your diamonds in the What's up YouTube family, it's your boy Mike Diamonds and today's video will be on how to start a fitness clothing line and I got tons of questions when I started Diamonds Fitness a few months ago So the way I'm gonna do this video is I'm gonna break it down into demand and supply. I have my notes here and everything that I'd wanna talk to you guys about and all the questions at that time that you guys asked me about. So I've titled this the Gymshark model and this is the exact model that I use. In this video, I'll be dividing into demand and supply. On the supply side, I'll be talking about the suppliers I used and the suppliers that Gymshark is using, as, long, as well as the quality and quantity, the cost price, the printing, the selling price, the shipping and also comparing the prices of your cost price selling price and what you should be expecting in terms of your profit margin and then I'm gonna be talking about the demand side which includes the marketing YouTube Instagram and sponsorships so all of those will be listed here so first of all let's start off with the supply now in terms of supply when Gymshark started out in 2012, they also started small and my, that's my biggest advice to anyone is to start small, never invest a large amount of money. And when you start small, you need to look for suppliers who are willing to produce for a smaller company. And I'm also going to talk about when you've gone big or when you want to start big, the suppliers you have to go to and in this case, the suppliers that Gymshark uses. So in my case, the suppliers that I used were local, local manufacturers that were able to produce the clothing. And another option was for me as well is to buy the clothes in local shops as well because they all aren't printed on. So the clothing I used was either produced in the manufacturers locally or I was able to find them in local shops that were plain and I was able to print on them. I was happy with the material and the quantity that they could produce for me. Now I'll be talking about the suppliers that Gymshark uses. Now no one can actually really confirm the suppliers that they're using. However, I've watched a few videos and in this video it contains an email confirming that they're their supplier. However, it can't be it can't be confirmed. It can't be said that they are Gymshark's real suppliers. However, after doing some searching of my own, a number of fitness brands use these suppliers. I can't confirm it. However, I'll leave all the links below of everything that I've used. So that if you are looking to invest in larger quantities of clothing, if you are looking to put into money into a large amount of um, stock that you want to use, this is the area you go to to find your suppliers. And if you go in and you do enough dig deep, digging deep, you can find one of your all of your favorite fitness brands and where they find the suppliers from. I can't confirm it 100%, but this is all the research that I've done. And here we go. I've opened up the files already. Um, this company right here, Don Guan Human Factory, has said in an email to the previous video, I've, I'll link it below, that they are Gymshark suppliers. And they've gone to saying that they're, how long they've been established for, their total numbers of employees, their total revenue, and their main markets, and their details go on. I'll link these all below. And then you do your research, and you can find all of this on Alibaba.com. Um, I did my research and I looked further. One of their uh, pieces that they offered was this piece here. Now it might not seem familiar to a lot of you guys and this is a stock piece and this is what I'm talking about. These pieces I've seen it on Lex Fitness and I'll put a photo right there. Lex Fitness has used one of these clothing however it is not on Gymshark's side and I'm, if I'm not mistaken that it hasn't been released yet. So it is a way of trying to confirm that they are their suppliers but I'm pretty sure that Gymshark uses a number of suppliers for all their different garments. Going on to it you can also see that on different suppliers on the website you can find Gymshark's different suppliers and their cost price for everything and the companies that they use. In this case for the seamless tees they use the Shanghai Lingdong industry and then another example is that their very newly released um, Devon shirts 
Here they show examples of the Devon shirts, the number of pieces you can order and everything. And then going back to, once I've talked about suppliers, you need to take into consideration your quantity. Since I was in a big company and I couldn't produce that amount and I always highly advise for you to start small if you can. The quantity I used was not more than 100. So for me, example, I could never order from this site because for you to be able to order here, you need to have a minimum order quantity between 500 and 1000 and even more. That being said, the quantity you order from the company determined the price of each piece of garment that it cost for me. So in my case, it would cost me more because I was ordering a lesser quantity. However, in Gymshark's case, it cost them more. And coming to that, you also want to talk about printing. The printing you want to have done on it. I got my printing done locally and I'll be showing you guys a video of that. Here at RFC headquarters, they're the people who do the printing for me. Reggie's actually a really good friend. So I'd rather, I can trust him with everything that I'm doing. So if you guys are in Namibia and you need printing done, on shirts or designs or whatever videography work come to Reggie, come to RFC headquarters Right, we're going to put the Mike Diamond logo on the like left hand side Zimbabwe, Zambia Just press it down and there's a timer which will let you know when it's done That's about it Gymshark is probably doing their printing at this area here or they could be importing their clothing and doing their printing there so you want to get your logo printed on it or whatever and packaging could possibly be done by this site but packaging I also did myself I, ma I managed a way that I can try and deliver the product as best as I could and it was all done locally so I'm pretty sure if you live in a huge city this can be this can apply to you if you live in a big city that has manufacturers and that has printing it can be done for you and I highly recommend you use them besides the websites that I've listed here now since I've talked about the um, quantity you also want to take a look into the quality of the product which is extremely important and granted that you, you can use these websites they should be able to set, send you samples of the clothing so I was able to get samples of my clothing before I was able to put it out and if I was happy with it, if it really represented what I wanted, then I was happy with it. And this company, I'm pretty sure you guys can say that the top quality that you get from Gymshark is what these companies can offer you. Um, now, once I've talked about the quality and quantity, you want to talk about the cost price. So, an example, the clothing that I've mentioned, the cost price per shirt and this is the minimum they give you a range of six dollars for the stringer that I've shown you before they say or they claim that the seamless t-shirt at their lower end if you have if you're ordering at a higher quantity of 1500 pieces can cost you 8.5 US dollars per shirt and then for example the seamless Devon shirt that is popular on Gymshark and newly released is between one dollars to two dollars per piece now once you get your cost price you need to be able to determine what your selling price is going to be and from that you can see what your what your profit margin is going to be in my case when I'm selling the clothing and determining my own selling price is that I would say that my shirts to produce would cost between five and seven seven dollars and I would decide to sell my shirts at about between ten and maybe fourteen dollars depending on the quality of the shirt and how much you really think it's worth in determining the price you really want to meet the supply and the demand to find the correct selling price because if it's too high then it's going to be too much however let me use Gymshark as an example because they're a larger company and they're able to charge this so for example the newly released seamless Devon shirt they have a US price of between one dollar and two dollars and they're selling them for $53.99 on their website. Another um, example is their Seamless Tea, which is sold for $45.99. And they have on the website that they cost $8 to $10 in that range. So they're able to make a profit on the Seamless Devon shirt of $52 US dollars, or on the Seamless T shirt itself, uh, $37.49. US dollars and that is their maximum profit margin I can imagine granted that these are their producers and granted that those are the selling prices however their profit can't be determined what I've said here because what you have to take into consideration the bigger you could become and these aren't things I had to take into consideration because I was a smaller company is that you have to take into consideration their 
employ and employees the website the management sponsorships and marketing all of those things go into the cost of the actual shirt so between those numbers I gave you there the profit margin is highly likely to decrease because you have to take all of those things into consideration so now that we've talked about the product and the pricing you need to be also able to think of shipping I would I never decided to go into shipping because you also need to be able to take um, into account that your packages could get lost and at those times you need to take full responsibility of the pricing of that clothing with shipping if you're going to use I'm pretty sure if you're using DHL it's costing Gymshark about $15 per um, per two pounds of material that they do send by them and sometimes that can be included in the profit margin that I said and sometimes that can be completely on the seller and that depends completely on the company so I think that I've elaborately covered anything when it comes to suppliers of what I did and what Gymshark did the quantity and quality now I'm going to talk about the demand and I think the demand is easier for everyone because I believe that everyone who's already started or was thinking about it knows their ways of marketing now Gymshark is really known for how they marketed and the beautiful story of how they started off with YouTube and the same with me my marketing was using YouTube and Instagram and my social media however my social media following wasn't that great of an outreach compared to them obviously so Gymshark's marketing and their main marketing brands was their YouTubers and their sponsored athletes at the time you had the huge sponsored athletes in the beginning the original ones including Jeff Side, Matt Ogus, Chris Lovato and Lex Fitness to name a few those guys were able to do marketing to a large number of their fan base and that's why it's highly likely that you can use these huge suppliers where you can afford to pay that and make sure you can get rid of all the product that you do use and that's why the YouTube is extremely popular for marketing because you are more likely to buy product from a youtuber that you've known and you love and you want to support rather than seeing a billboard upstairs and then coming to sponsorships um, in terms of sponsorships what I did with my company when I left the country because I wasn't selling worldwide um, I was able to use I was able to ask my friends to be ambassadors for the company where the company wear the company's clothing wear diamonds fitness clothing and represent the brand and you know create that demand and that's what the sponsorships are supposed to do you're more likely to create a demand the same thing with soccer players if Ronaldo transfers or bail chances to Real Madrid you're more likely to buy their shirt because those are the people you support the same with the youtubers you're more likely to buy their clothing because they have a following and people really support them and believe in what they're doing the same with football you really believe in the team and I think I've covered everything in terms of how to start your fitness brand and I'm gonna leave with my final thoughts in the end I've talked about many things and I've talked a lot of numbers um, in terms of fitness brands and starting your own fitness clothing line there are many things that can go into starting a company and stuff that you can't overlook and I've told you guys a lot about pricing and selling and what it costs to produce the material I think that the Gymshark model and the model that I used is actually the exact same that Adidas uses and Nike uses however theirs is on a larger scale people buy into Adidas and I'm pretty sure that they get their clothing from similar companies within China you buy into Adidas clothing because you see your favorite people were sponsored by them or Nike example Ronaldo and Bale and the same with us in the fitness industry is that we're likely to buy the clothing that our favorite YouTubers are sponsored by and the people we look up to which is all the YouTubers you do follow and which is all the Gymshark athletes that do exist so in my final thoughts with seeing all the prices and seeing the back end and everything I'm more likely to buy um, a Gymshark um, apparel or any other apparel because I'd rather support the YouTubers and know the owners because you have some sort of connection with them so everyone who's starting a fitness brand all you fitness entrepreneurs out there start your brand I encourage you guys to do it because the fitness community is more likely to support guys who are within the fitness community and that they know personally instead of a CEO at Adidas or a CEO at Nike that you do not know and that hasn't offered you anything or helped you in any way or inspired you so 
And that is the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. This was more business-like. I've never done this type of video. If you're new to the video, subscribe if you haven't. Like the video if you did enjoy it. Drop any comments below if you guys do have any questions or if I need to make a part two to this. This is your boy Mike Diamonds. I'm out. Diamonds are for real. Oh. Throw your diamonds in the